Well, welcome. Uh, welcome to our Thursday midweek uh, live stream. Uh, my name is Mike. I'm the associate pastor at The Beacon. And it's great uh, if you're joining me live. Welcome. Hello uh, on this Thursday uh, afternoon. And if you're watching this later, it's great uh, to see you as well. Um, it's really great to be with you. And happy Easter. I hope you had a good good Easter um, this, this year. It was slightly different to the Easter we were expecting. Um, but it was good nonetheless. I think it's a really powerful testimony, actually, to um, just how powerful God is. The fact that Christians all around the world, all around the globe, in their homes and in their communities were celebrating the resurrection of Jesus. And um, praise be to God for that. And, and it was a real testimony as well to, to speak against the devil, to speak against the coronavirus, uh, to speak about the evil powers, to say that you can shut our churches, but you will not close down the church. You can shut our church buildings, but you will not stop God. Uh, you will not stop the message of Easter. You will not stop the message of hope and love um, that Jesus came to share. And we are an Easter people. Uh, we celebrate Easter once a year, but the truth is that we're an Easter people all year round. We're a resurrection people. Um, and, and we know that Jesus is alive, that Jesus is with us in whatever we're facing, whatever we're going through. Uh, Jesus is with us that Jesus mediates uh, as our high priest to God. He prays for us and, and speaks to God uh, on our behalf. Um, and also um, he is king and he is above all powers, whether earthly or heavenly. And Jesus in, is in control and he is king. And that's our hope as Christians, no matter what's going on in the world, that Jesus loves us and that Jesus is in control. And so we had a great Easter together, although it looks very different to what we were expecting. Um, and all of last week, we were really building towards um, Holy Weekend um, and, and we, we traveled through Holy Week together. We started off thinking about Jesus's triumphal entry into Jerusalem. We thought about Monday, Thursday, when Jesus had a Last Supper with his friends. We thought about Good Friday and when we reflected on the suffering and pain of the crucifixion and the cost of our sin. And then on Easter Saturday, we, we had that time of silence where we just reflected on, on the silence of Easter Saturday, that, that time in between the crucifixion and the resurrection as we awaited the light of dawn and the light of Easter Sunday. And then on Easter Sunday, we had a great time celebrating the resurrection together. Uh, but the empty tomb is not the end of the story. There's so much more um, after that. And and there's lots of testimonies in the Gospels that talk about what Jesus got up to after the tomb was found to be empty. And so we're going to reflect on one of those stories uh, together this, this, this afternoon. And it's from John's Gospel. So if you've got your Bible, do turn to John. And it's chapter 21. And we're going to be reading verses 1 to 17 together now. It says this. Afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of De Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realise that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you got any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of a, the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him for he had taken it off and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153, but even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, 
Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. It's a, an amazing story of Jesus appearing to his disciples after his resurrection. They've gone out fishing. Uh, they've returned to their, their old trade and they're out, they're out fishing together and they're struggling to catch anything. They've not caught a thing. And Jesus comes and miraculously they catch this huge uh, trawl of fish together. And when they do that, they, they recognise, they realise who Jesus is. And we have this amazing uh, reaction of Peter as he jumps out of the boat and starts swimming towards Jesus. I, I love Peter. He's probably my favourite of the disciples. I see a lot of myself in him. He's just very instinctive and very passionate and driven by his heart. And he just jumps out of the boat. And the rest of the disciples, uh, I, I imagine, just sailing back to shore in the, on the boat. They're only 100 yards out, probably going faster than Peter is swimming just sort of shaking their heads uh, uh, at Peter. But that's the person Peter was. And he jumps out the boat and he swims to shore and they meet Jesus there. And we see that they have breakfast with Jesus. They have a meal uh, of, of fish and bread. And I often think what an amazing meal that would have been to be at. What an amazing breakfast to share with Jesus. And this Easter Sunday, me and Rach uh, were up really early before Josh even um, we watched the sun come up and then uh, when Josh was up, we had a breakfast together of, of fish and bread and we reflected on this actual scripture, actually, and reflected on the resurrection together and celebrated that together uh, with breakfast. And then the next part of the story is a conversation that Jesus has with the disciple Peter, the, the same Peter that's jumped out of the boat. And it's quite a frustrating conversation from the outside. Um, you're wondering whether Jesus has, has like sort of short term memory loss or whether he's just not listening. But he keeps asking the same question again and again. And he asks it three times. And Peter's getting increasingly annoyed the more that Jesus keeps asking him these questions. And Jesus asks Peter, do you love me? And Peter says, yes, Lord, I love you. And, and Jesus says, feed my lambs. And Jesus asks again, do you, do you love me, Peter? And he says, yes. And Jesus says, take care of my sheep. But for a third time, Jesus asks again, Peter, do you love me? And Peter's getting really annoyed at this point and saying, yes, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus says, feed my sheep. It's an amazing conversation conversation that's been happening because Jesus, as he says, feed my sheep, take care of my lambs. Um, Jesus is telling Peter that he is going to use Peter to build the church um, through him. Um, but also he's giving Peter the, the, the option of redemption. He's redeeming Peter in this conversation because this is the same Peter from, from chapter 18 of John's gospel who denies Jesus three times uh, to save himself. And the same Peter that promised to follow Jesus even to death denied Jesus three times to, to, to soldiers, to servant girls, uh, was ashamed to be associated with Jesus. And yet here, Jesus gives him three opportunities to tell Jesus that he loves him. So you have the three denials and you have the three te the proclamations of his love for Jesus. And in that, Peter finds uh, redemption. And, and that's an amazing testimony, an amazing story, because isn't that the same for all of us? Isn't that our story? Is that we are often on the wrong side, that we are those that have denied Jesus with our thoughts or our actions. But in the Easter story in the cross and the resurrection, Jesus gives us an opportunity to find redemption in his love and forgiveness. And as I read this testimony and thought about the four gospels and the four testimonies of Jesus, I was reflecting on the power that testimony holds, the power of hearing the stories of the redeeming work that Jesus is doing in one another's lives. It's one of the reasons I love baptisms because you get to hear that, that story of how Jesus has worked in someone's life. And, and as I thought about the power of testimony, I thought it'd be great to hear more of our testimonies because we were sharing testimonies at our home group last night and it's great to hear them, uh, but we often don't share them. Um, and they can be a real powerful 
um, influence on people. I know testimonies that were shared with me when I was um, a young Christian were really powerful uh, to me to hear what God, what it actually looked like to physically, to practically live out a life with Jesus. And so over Easter Sunday, I don't know if you saw on social media, but there was a challenge thrown out uh, to, to video yourself for three minutes sharing a testimony of, of how Jesus has changed your life. It could be how you came to faith. It could be something that Jesus is doing in your life at that particular moment. Or it could just be a story from the past of how Jesus has helped you through a period or been with you in a good time, whatever it is, just a three minute story of how Jesus changed your life. And the idea was you recorded yourself doing that, you put it onto Facebook, and then you challenged five other people to do the same. The idea being that the world, we're gonna hear these stories, these testimonies, of what it actually looks like to follow Jesus. And this got me thinking, I thought it was a really good idea. So I wanna come to you uh, this afternoon with a challenge. Um, A challenge to, at some point today or this week or next week, to when when you're in the garden or when you're sat at home, get your phone, um, or even when you're at work, get your phone and just record yourself, just for three minutes, three minutes maximum, one to three minutes um, uh, of a story of how Jesus has changed your life, a testimony of how Jesus has changed your life. And once you've done that, I encourage you to send that in uh, to me or Daryl. And we're going to collate all of those. And then over the next uh, few weeks and, and months, we're going to share those as part of our live streams on a Sunday, as part of our on our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, um, to get the word out there of what actually a life with Jesus looks like. And, and, and we're convinced that when we share our testimonies, when we share what Jesus has done in our lives, that other people are drawn to that and find it very powerful. So please do engage with that. Send us those three minute videos of how Jesus has changed your life. Because that story of Peter being redeemed by Jesus um, reminded me of my own testimony of how far off I was from God. I wasn't even looking for God, but God in his grace and in his forgiveness hunted me down, um, came to find me, spoke to me and changed my life um, in, in a church in Andover one Sunday morning. Um, I'm not going to share my testimony now. Both me and Daryl will do the three minute challenge as well. So you'll get to hear those. Um, but it reminded me of a song uh, of, of, of Jesus's redemption, of how we are saved. And it's not by anything that we do. It's by what Jesus has done. And he offers that as a free gift of grace. So I thought I'd share that song with you now. Unfortunately, you're going to have to put up with um, my trying to play guitar and singing. Um, but but just bear with it and sing along because you can drown me out. But um, it's a song called Grace Alone. I th- just think it's an amazing song that talks about um, how we are saved by grace when we know Jesus. So let's sing that together. <clears throat> I was an orphan lost at the fall Running away when I'd hear you call Father, you were your will I had no righteousness of my own I had no right to draw near your throne Father, you love me still And in your love before you laid the world's foundation You predestined to adopt me as your own You have raised me so high above my station I'm a child of God by grace and grace alone You left your home to seek out the lost You knew the great and terrible cost Jesus, your face was set I worked my fingers down to the bone Nothing I did could ever atone Jesus, you paid my debt By your blood I have redemption and salvation 
Lord, you died that I might reap what you have sown. And you rose that I might be a new creation. I am born again by grace and grace alone. I was in darkness all of my life. I never knew the day from the night. The Spirit you made me see. I swore I knew the way on my own. Head full of rocks, a heart made of stone. The Spirit you moved in. At your touch, my sleeping spirit was awakened. On my darkened heart, the light of Christ has shone. Called into a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Heaven citizen by grace and grace alone. So I'll stand in faith by grace and grace alone. I will run the race by grace and grace alone. I will slay my sin by grace and grace alone. I will reach the end by grace and grace alone. I'm a child of God by grace and grace alone. Let's finish by praying together. Yes, Father, we do thank you that we are called to be children of God and we're called to that, not by anything that we do, not by anything that we are, but by your goodness. It's a free gift of grace and love and forgiveness for all those who call on you as Lord and Saviour. I thank you for the testimonies that we have in the four Gospels. I thank you for the testimony of Scripture to a good God, a God who is love. And I thank you for my testimony and all the testimonies that we have of Jesus, of how he has changed our lives. And I pray that as we share those testimonies with one another, as we share those testimonies with the wider world, that people will be encouraged and that people will come to know you as their Lord and Saviour too. And that more lives will be changed by your grace and your grace alone. So I thank you for this time. I thank you for your word and I thank you for our church family. I pray that you protect us wherever you are, that you are with us uh, by the power of your spirit, that you bless us and you give us a real sense of your peace in Jesus name. Amen. Um, the last thing to say is if you are if you're struggling with anything or if you just want to share anything with us, uh, we do have an email address, uh, prayers, uh, prayer at beaconbaptist.co.uk. Please do get in touch with us. We'd love to be praying for you. Um, or if there's anything we can do to help you uh, in these difficult times, we'd love to be doing that. So please do get in touch with us. And the only other thing is to say is that we're live again on Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. for church. So please do join us, uh, invite your friends and your family. Uh, thank you for joining me for this Thursday reflection and do uh, record those three minute testimonies and get them sent in. The only last thing to say is when you are recording them, um, ignore my pink phone, but do record them. Uh, with your phone that way and not that way. It just looks a little bit better uh, when it's when it's live stream. But thank you for joining me. God bless. Take care and stay safe.